So welcome to the seventh video of this course. Uh, last time we talked about the idea or the model of system environment model. Uh, it was a nice model to begin to understand uh, the environment interaction with our uh, quantum system or a quantum uh, problem. Uh, and it was even nice to recall the density matrix formalism, which is uh, more appropriate uh, while recalling this kind of uh, environment uh, interaction uh, with us. Today, uh, it's a bit more uh, interesting even for representing what I call the operator sum representation. But let me first say that what we kind of kind of uh, had before, that we said that we can have a, uh, uh, an output density matrix, a quantum uh, operation or element quantum element operation here that is evolving as a uh, unitary evolution of our system, of our density matrix. So this is just nothing else than the, uh, the uh, unitary uh, transformation of uh, this uh, input density matrix to the output density matrix. And also I can recall that I can do measurement and this measurement that has been uh, done over the environment. So the environment can evolve uh, into this uh, uh, projectors. So those projectors are very uh, important for uh, conjugating uh, with themselves to produce the density matrix again as a uh, the output uh, density matrix here. So these are what are called projectors. Okay, P, PK is here, the projectors. And this is kind of measurement. So let's build a quantum circuit that looks like this. So we recalled before that we have uh, operation like the rotation operation, the rotation uh, matrix that looks like this, two cosines and minus sine here and the off diagonal and plus sine theta over two here. Uh, and if you like to begin with a system, a quantum system for a density matrix and the environment model, this is a system environment model, but put in a quantum circuit. So you can trace out the information processed uh, in this circuit. And I just labeled that uh, by rad here to say that this is the unitary uh, operation. That this is the kind of operation that we will have uh, in our system here. And I would like to measure the output density matrix or the uh, uh, output element quantum operation element here and I also do measurement over the basis over the basis of the environment so if I would like to build this matrix this matrix of operation let me just first say something uh, maybe it will simplify the calculations for this kind of uh, matrix I just recalled that the lambda is sinus squared theta over 2 and you will identify uh, now why I just called it something like this. So if I would like to build this matrix of unitary operation and just simple uh, matrix elements that you can see, I recall that this kind of uh, two, if I have zero, one, one, zero, whatever, it's this two-bit uh, transformation which will allow me to build four uh, columns and four rows, so it's four by four matrix. If I recall that this is uh, environment, for example, let's say uh, environment plus system. So I would like to say, for example, 0, 0. Maybe here I say uh, 0, 1. Okay, and here is 1, 1, 0. And here it's 1, 1. And the same here. 0, 0, uh, 0, 1. Make sure that you write it consecutively. 1, 1, 1. So, the elements for our environment, so actually if I say for each bit here, this is the environment and this is the system, this environment, system, environment, system, and so on. So if I have a kind of a system which has a zero, just zero bit here, or zero uh, uh, vector, so it will allow me to put zero from the beginning. So I search for z two zeros for the systems, so here would be zero, okay. Another zero will be here, actually. That's right. No, just okay. This is zero and zero first here. And for our uh, kind of here, just we have uh, zero. So, okay. Let me just uh, put uh, here one because I have uh, the environment and the system for both zero. Nothing happens. And if I say that the matrix elements that will evolve, for example, for uh, uh, the system, or for the, first of all, the environment with the system, which will happen to be 0, 1, and 1, 0, 
this will allow me just after simple calculations and you put something like this recall that this is the quantum operation element that you'd like to calculate and if you evolve try it yourself and evolve zero and times it with the matrix but make sure that you put it in the bra here and times it with the matrix for rotation and also another one with the cat you will find uh, eventually that this uh, uh, term here for for example one on one would be one minus theta sorry one minus uh, lambda which is equivalent to the cosine theta over two and another one if you try it yourself and you evolve the matrix from zero to one for the uh, environment you will see that this is equivalent to that this minus it's actually minus uh, theta over two minus sine theta over two so for this kind of also one one will evolve like one minus lambda and uh, i guess that this also has something here that is for one and this for one will be the reflection of this okay and uh, for the other operations so we just have kind of uh, another one which is for one the environment and the one environment would be one here and the other off diagonal elements i would put zeros other zeros here okay so zero this is zero this is zero this is zero and this is zero okay so this is the unitary transformation, the unitary matrix here that you have. You can build it uh, by recalling the following that I have, uh, as I said, for 1, 0 uh, and 0, 1. And try it yourself. You'll find it easy uh, a bit. Let me uh, recall that if I would like to measure the or I'd like to get the operation element for the 0 and operation element for 1, I can get from 0 to 0. Nothing happens to the environment. This is for the environment. But I would like to evolve the system. This is for 1, 0. It's the inverse here. You'll find for 0 and 1 for the environment. 0 and 1, for example. 0 and 1, for example. And all of this. This is for an environment. You will recall that if I have uh, the matrix that re corresponds to this uh, operation for E0, it's actually this. Let me just remark it by red. This is for E0 because we have to both the zeros for the environment. Okay, zeros for the environment. For E1, it will be like that because you have here E1, E1 here, okay? Uh, and it, it looks like that, that I get it from here and I construct the two by two matrix that I have here. So what's the benefit for getting that? I get that because I would like to measure or I'd like to get the the operation, quantum operation uh, output uh, operation element or operation uh, matrix. So recall that I have a density matrix and this density matrix maybe looks like this. Okay, you see it clearly. It looks like this. This density matrix is AZ and B. I just put it uh, uh, like that to start to evolve the system by each operation element that uh, uh, corresponds to each uh, system that corresponds to even uh, when I have zero in the environment and one in the environment and uh, if I do this same simple calculations you just multiply E0 with the density matrix that I have here and also for the conjugate you'll find eventually evolve this you'll find that this is the matrix the eventual matrix if you look carefully at this uh, matrix you will find that it has a uh, square one minus uh, lambda square one minus lambda is what I call phase damping why because phase damping why is a phase damping because I have this kind of a square root of one minus theta that's actually can decay it will decay by exponential say t1 for example over t t capital and it, this t capital is what I call the phase damping time okay you see it clearly here yeah this is the phase damping time for this t this is phase damping time is what I call a phase damping matrix. So, what I do if I do this kind of uh, of circuit again by recalling that I do this. Okay, I put the same uh, uh, rotation matrix, but I start to make this unitary um, box or what I call the black box, con uh, even containing another operation which is the C naught. Okay. So by measuring uh, the 
we're measuring the uh, op the outcomes for both for the operation elements for the environment when it evolves zero and zero so both zeros uh, won't affect the system and the control not gate won't affect the system so you expect the same outcome of what we had here which is the let me write it in black where okay so so we'd have one zero zero square root one minus lambda recall this lambda like this okay so what about if I evolve the uh, our the uh, the measurement that will be will happen for uh, this case of the environment evolve from zero to one? So you would have here the environment that looks a bit different. So because there is a control gate that will affect the system, it will play an important role as a not uh, operation or operator here, which is the x operator. Recall this x, and it will affect it will play. Uh, this uh, element and it will be multiplied uh, uh, with it, with, uh, with this operation and you will see the result eventually that looks like this so you just see that this kind of square uh, roots of lambda become here so it flipped from the off diagonal to the on diagonal up above so this is what I call actually kind of what I say so we had phase damping and here is what I call the amplitude damping, okay? The amplitude damping for our system, okay, and the on diagonal, and it represents a very important phenomenon for the loss of energy for the qubits. Okay, so let me tell you something uh, about this kind of uh, uh, matrix that I will evolve like what I did for the other case without the uh, control not gates. So if I did get this uh, kind of density matrix, this looks like the same and I would like to get the outcome, the probability or the, even the uh, density matrix for the this matrix uh, uh, for this uh, operation elements, you will see that it will evolve eventually. Do your calculations carefully and you will find it looks like this. Okay. If you look at its diagonal and off diagonal terms, you can look at the diagonal terms. So it will be uh, looking like this 1 minus lambda. And for the off diagonal terms, you see the square root 1 minus lambda. So I can get here the on diagonal elements to be this uh, decaying. So T, say I say T, over T capital and T1, okay, and the same here for this kind of uh, like, uh, expansion for 1 minus lambda as exponential. But for the off diagonal terms, there will be uh, 1, just as I said, T1, but actually the phase damping time this is the off diagonal terms remember that I had this kind of uh, square root as phase damping and it will be ex exponential for twice the time this is what happens actually so I can conclude that uh, those off diagonal terms are the phase damping case I'm sorry for shaking okay and the on diagonal terms are nothing else than the amplitude damping and recall something important here that the T2 for the on for the off diagonals that are decaying by phase damping is actually twice the time for amplitude damping this is very important in uh, a quantum error correction. We would like to see this kind of energy loss for the qubits that will cause errors and you will see these errors and you will try to correct them. The phase damping and the amplitude dampings are the major roles uh, or major role players for this uh, error correction procedures that we will see. Let me just tell you eventually something about this uh, um, quantum circuit. I had a quantum circuit for uh, the density matrix and the environment by unitary evolution 
uh, that you, you see here but suppose that we have another uh, system here which is another uh, uh, evolution another uh, uh, unitary evolution for our environment so it means that I have a change of basis here so I measure for uh, different bases here changing basis that I have for the environment what will happen for our density matrix for our measurements even for outcomes first I ask myself is it a valid uh, operator sum representation I say yes so if yes Let's expand that by unitary evolution, unitary transformation for the operation, quantum operation element, operation element here. This is unitary evolution, and it will evolve the element, and it will get me just you sum, and you have this f uh, sub j. Okay? So, let me write it down. Let me write it down here. So, write it down, the, looks like this. So, operation, uh, new operation element that affects the density matrix. So, you would sum for this... Now you will substitute the u and I will have the conjugate so I substitute the u conjugate and actually both can be put in a direct delta function for both k and k dash I, k, I say k and k dash for both unitary of evolution or unitary trans or unitary operation so I will actually it does not change because I preserve the diagonals for the kind of delta and it will get me the same e right will give me the same E of rho. So nothing changes. What I can conclude from that is that like I have, so let me, because I did not mention that here, I will mention briefly, if I have a density matrix that uh, like, looks like this, we have the density matrix that I can sum for I, uh, for probability, and our projectors here. This kind of density matrix has a very nice feature that I would like to mention. This very nice feature is what I call the unraveling of the density matrix. You can spectrally decompose it by the eigenvalues if I have here, okay, for this projectors. This is the eigenvalues represent the probability. So this is what I call spectral decomposition. Spectral decomposition. And it's also what I call unraveling. I have to preserve the trace to be one, okay? To be a valid density matrix. Uh, and the same happens for uh, this uh, unitary uh, evolution of a, a quantum circuit in terms of the operation elements. So the operation elements, and what's new here that I can also have what I call infinite traveling. So I have infinite travelings for the density matrix and also for the operation elements, the quantum operation elements. And this uh, guarantees that this kind of nice unitary uh, degree of freedom uh, is important in the, uh, kind of the, the error correction procedures, that we have the unravelings for the uh, quantum uh, cross -oper operators, and we'll see that when I try to correct errors uh, in the next videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next video.